All right. Well, as it's been mentioned, this is the final Sunday of November, a month of Thanksgiving, a month in which we have been focusing on giving thanks. And it's my hope that as we, as this month ends and we enter into December, that will carry with us a greater awareness of the power and importance of our practicing gratitude and appreciation for our life every day. I hope we'll take time as the sun rises or as we rise to, to say thank you for the beautiful gift of awakening to another day in our earth life. I hope that we'll take time to stop and smell the roses because there are always in bloom, in a mind that is filled with happy thoughts and the fragrance of beautiful ideas. I hope we'll stop to watch the sunset in the evening with gratitude for a day well spent, whether we've been housebound or we've been out in the world. And most of all, I hope that we will stop and be fully present right where we are, no matter where we are, whether we're alone or we're with family or friends or coworkers or strangers. And no matter what might be going on in the moment, that we will take time to look for something right there to appreciate. Abraham Hicks tells us, look for good things about where you are. And in your state of appreciation, you'll lift all self-imposed limitations and all limitations are self-imposed and free yourself for the receiving of wonderful things. Now, some moments in our life are so obviously filled with wonderful things that it's easy for us to feel grateful. Other moments, maybe not so much. And so we have to take a deep breath and look a little deeper to remind ourselves that how we experience the moments of our life is up to us. But every moment is worth appreciating because we're alive in it to appreciate it. Now we talk a lot about the universal law of attraction because it's important for us to be aware that it's there. It's the organizational law of the universe that matches energies with similar energies, including our own. It's the law of like attracts like. It's what, it makes what goes around come around. Science of Mind tells us the law of attraction contains all subjective tendencies, which is to say, all unseen energies of desire and belief that are bound to attract. It responds to thought vibrations and creates the forms and expressions that appear in life. Nothing happens without it. No form appears in this world without the law of attraction or in, it doesn't appear in our world either. Every form, every expression is designed by the law of attraction. It matches the vibration of our thoughts with 
the vibration of similar thoughts. And our thoughts become one with those thoughts, and those thoughts become one with us, and they fill our minds. Ever notice when you start focusing on certain thoughts, positive or negative, that more thoughts that are similar to it come to mind? Maybe we're thinking appreciatively about someone or some event, and more pleasant thoughts come to mind about others and other events that we've experienced. That's the law of attraction in action. And when our mind is filled and running over with appreciation, we have a sense of well-being and a good feeling about what's going to come next in our life. Or maybe we're thinking angry or resentful thoughts about someone or some event. And while we're thinking about that, more thoughts, angry thoughts, resentful thoughts about other people and other events come to mind. And that's the law of attraction in action. And when our mind is filled, when it's occupied, when it's running over with negative thoughts, we have a sense of uneasiness and a bad feeling about what might happen next in our life. The thoughts we focus on repeatedly, positive or negative, become habits of thought, and habits of thought become our belief system in life. And our belief system about life gains momentum in our mind with every thought we think and causes our life to go in a certain direction where certain things happen. As our thoughts take form and expression in our life. If we're practicing appreciation every day, if we're grateful for our life, our gratitude gains energetic momentum in our life. And we attract and we're attracted to more things for which to be grateful. The Japanese Buddhist priest and writer, Dojin Zenji, wrote, Continuous practice, day after day, is the most appropriate way of expressing gratitude. This means that you practice continuously, without wasting a single day of your life. Why is it so important? Your life today is the outcome of the continuous practice of the past. Our life today is the outcome of the continuous practice of our thoughts. Whether we've been thinking thoughts of gratitude or resentment, whether we've been thinking thoughts of peace or anger, of happiness or sadness, of health or sickness, of positivity or negativity, we've created our life today. Our life is the outcome of those past thoughts. And whatever we're thinking right now is likely similar to what we were thinking a few minutes ago. Because our past thoughts set the tone for today's thoughts. And because our thoughts go forth and multiply, they gain momentum in our mind so that the thoughts we think today will most likely become what we experience in form and expression tomorrow. But we can always change our mind. Our thoughts don't need to occur automatically. They can occur deliberately. Every day, if we want to, we can consciously choose what we'll think about. 
Can we afford the luxury of a negative thought? An ungracious thought? A resentful thought? That depends on how long we want to indulge in that thought. I mean, we can indulge in it long enough to acknowledge that it's there, because as we do, we're able to let it go. But if we decide to dwell on it, then it will gain momentum and attract more and more people and situations and events and conditions just like it. Think it and then get off it. Which brings us along our spiritual journey through the alphabet once again to the letter X. And today, X is for the Chinese letter XI, which is pronounced Xi. And as I mentioned before, the title of this morning's talk is, Are You Full of Xi? Now, ever been told you were full of it? Or maybe it sounded just a little different when you heard it. We're usually told that we're full of something when we say or do something that displeases someone else. For example, when I was growing up, my mama used to tell me whenever I was feeling confident and verbally expressive, that I was full of myself. And I could tell that it wasn't a good thing to be full of because she usually added, and you need to get over yourself. So it didn't take me long to learn that being full of myself was not pleasing. And that thought gained momentum in my life. I tried as many ways as I could to be full of something else, to get over myself and be full of someone else. Someone more acceptable, someone more pleasing, someone more lovable. I practiced for so long that even into my early adult years, I had no confidence in myself because I didn't know who I was. Like it or not, we live in a universe in which we are communicating with it and with each other through vibration, through energy, and through the ethers, as Ernest Holmes put it. Even before words, even without words, we're communicating how we feel about ourselves and others and life. We can talk a good show, and we can hold our tongue till we're blue in the face. We can be shy or appear aggressive. But whatever emotional energy is alive in us will ooze out of us, unseen but not unfelt by us and those around us. There's no way to confine the energy of our emotions. And we can't hold on to the vibration of the thoughts we emit. With every thought, we proclaim what we believe about ourself and life. And the universe acknowledges it and responds to it. Abraham Hicks tells us whatever you're thinking about, is literally like planning a future event. When you're worrying, you're planning. When you're appreciating, you're planning. What are you planning? If we're not planning a celebration of life with us in it, with the thoughts that we have right now, if we're not happy with the direction that our life seems to be going. We can change our life's direction by changing our thinking about ourselves and who we are. 
Life doesn't happen to us. We happen in life. The habit or the habit of our thoughts, the energy aura that those thoughts create because they cause us to feel a certain way, become our mood and attitude and who we are being in the world. Now, usually when we say someone's moody, we mean they're grouchy. They're negatively moody. But moody is moody. We can be optimistically moody. We can be an optimistically moody person, a moody person who's joyful most of the time. We can just be in a good mood. We're all here to be all that we can be, but how much we express of who we are depends on who we believe we are. I looked for myself in self-help books, but I didn't find me there. And I studied Buddhism and theosophy and Christian science, but those were not the path of self-discovery for me. And then I was introduced to science of mind and I read these words. It is the self-knowing mind alone that constitutes reality, personality, and individuality. It is the image of God, the essence of sonship. Without choice, volition, and will, there would be no channel through which the ideas of God could be expressed. I knew then that if I was ever going to discover my true self, I needed to look where who I am began within me. Matt Kahn, wonderful spiritual teacher, defines the word me as magnified energy. I realized being authentically me in all the ways that felt real to me was the only way for me to discover the magnified energy that I am. The self that is the reality the personality and the individuality made in the image of God. That's a self we want to be, not a self we want to get over. Did I mention that the word she in Chinese means to be fond of, to like, to enjoy, to be happy? to feel pleased, delighted, and glad. It's a good thing to be full of. Because when we're full of she, we're full of our divine self. When we're grateful for our life, when we appreciate being ourself in it, we feel connected with our intuition, with our inner guidance, with our divine self. We're not looking for someone to tell us who we are or how to live or how to behave or respond in any moment. When we feel connected to our intuition, we trust our choices because we trust the divine self that we are. And when we know that our choices come from divine guidance, then we understand that it is never our right to try to infringe upon the divine guidance of anyone else. We're not looking to control the choices anyone makes, just so we'll feel better or safer or more peaceful. When we live each day grateful 
for the ease of happy moments and thankful for the lessons we learn about our freedom to choose in difficult moments. When we lay our head down to sleep, we find we experience a night's rest, feeling blessed. When we're full of she, we're unconcerned about tomorrow because we know that what comes next will be the outcome of our gratitude today. We trust tomorrow will bring more into our life to be fond of, to like, to enjoy, to be happy about, and for which we feel pleased, delighted, and glad. I'd like to end my talk today and end this month of Thanksgiving today with a beautiful prayer that was offered by the spiritual master Muji. And if you want, you can close your eyes and I'll just read it from my heart to yours. It says, bless you, bless you bless you, wherever you may be in this world. Whatever your situation, there is a place beyond all this. And the amazing thing, there is no distance. My humble prayer is this. May peace and true love, compassion and wisdom become contagious again on this planet. It begins inside each one's heart. Let it be your heart. Start here. Namaste. Amen. All right. Well, this is, once again, the time of our service when we get to say thank you. Thank you, thank you. And we'll say bless you, bless you, bless you, wherever you are, whatever the situation. We want to say thank you for your love and support of LEC and its message of love. We are so grateful that through all the strange times, through all the changes, through all the stepping out and stepping in and stepping out and stepping in that you've been here. And we are so grateful for that. And if you don't know how to support LEC, but you'd like to, because maybe just today you heard something that you're grateful for, then there are several ways you can Hit the donate button on our Facebook page, Life Enrichment Center. You can go to our website, lecflint.com, and hit the contribute button. If you're a member of PayPal, you can support us that way. Or you can send a check to 2512 South Thigh Road, Flint, Michigan, 48532. Now, I want to say one more thing. I know that this is the time of year when many of us want to give an extra donation for Christmas. And so often we do that when we meet together for our Christmas sing-along and candlelight service. But we can't do that this year. So if you'd like to send a Christmas donation because it's something you do, because it's something that feels good for you, then you can do it in all the ways I just mentioned. And thank you. Okay. Well, I'd like to invite our gratitude receiver to come forward. Last week she came forward 